you probably think of Indonesia as beaches, volcanoes, and spicy food, not warships that can scare the hell out of a submarine commander. But then comes the Marta Dinata-class frigate, sleek, modular, armed to the teeth, the naval equivalent of wearing a tuxedo with an AK-47 strapped underneath. The hype? She's the pride of Jakarta's fleet. The reality? A mix of ambition, Dutch engineering, and some suspiciously empty mounting slots waiting for gear that never arrived. Today, we're tearing this frigate apart. The good, the bad, and the expensive. Let's see if Indonesia's dream ship is really a predator or just a very fancy floating PowerPoint presentation. Welcome to Military Forces Unleashed. Let's dive. The Martadana was designed to do it all. Anti-submarine, anti-air, anti-surface. Basically, if it floats or flies, Jakarta wants this frigate to kill it. Sounds badass, right? Well, here comes the punchline. The price tag? About $220 million per unit. Not insane for a modern frigate, but here's the kicker. Many systems were delivered under the lovely phrase, fit for, but not with. Translation, you get the ship, but some weapons are missing, waiting for future upgrades. Imagine buying a Ferrari, but the dealer tells you the brakes and turbo will be installed someday. Then there's the dependence problem. Sure, four of the six home modules are built in Indonesia, which looks patriotic as hell, but the brains, combat systems, radar, missiles, come straight from the Netherlands and European suppliers. That's like cooking your own noodles, but importing the sauce, the spices, and the meatballs. And finally, the classic naval trap. Jack of all trades, master of none. By trying to be anti-sub, anti-air, and anti-surface all at once, Martadonna risks being mediocre at all three. So yeah, big promises. But can this frigate actually deliver in a fight? Or is it Indonesia flexing with a gym membership it barely uses? And that's where the clever part kicks in. Here's where the Marta Donata pulls a smart move. Modular design and hybrid propulsion. First, the modularity. This is the Sigma 10514 design, courtesy of Damon Shipyards in the Netherlands. Six modules make one frigate. Four are built in Indonesia's PT PAL Surabaya yard. Two are shipped from the Netherlands. It's like a Lego battleship. The point? knowledge transfer, local industry growth, and maybe, just maybe, less dependence on foreign yards in the future. Big win for Jakarta's ego. Second, propulsion. The frigate runs on a Kodo system, combined diesel or electric. Sounds fancy, but here's the catch. Diesel engines for speed, electric motors for cruising quietly. Against submarines, silence is golden you can sneak around with a much smaller acoustic signature. Think of it as switching from a roaring Harley to a silent Tesla when you need to creep up on someone. This combo means the Marta Donata isn't just a paper tiger. She's got real tricks, flexibility, stealth, and industry symbolism. But wait until you hear what she's packing, or rather, what she's supposed to be packing. On paper, the weapons list reads like a naval fantasy. Exocet MM40 Block 3 anti-ship missiles, VL Mica short to medium SAM cells, a 76 mm Otomolara main gun, torpedo launchers, and space for a modern CIWS and EW suite. In reality, some of those systems were delivered later under FFBNW contracts placeholders installed at commission with the rest to follow on different procurement schedules. So yes, when a Marta Donata sails, she sends a message. But depending on the moment, that message might be more bark than bite until the remaining packages arrive and integrate. Still, even partial loadouts force adversaries to calculate risk, and that's a strategic win for Jakarta while budgets and supply chains catch up. Now let's talk politics, because no warship sails in a vacuum. Indonesia sits across contested sea lanes and faces a diplomacy puzzle, balancing relations with Beijing, Washington, and regional neighbors while protecting sovereignty over a vast archipelago. The Marta Donata is more than metal. 
It's a message of capability and intent. Even partially equipped, these frigates act as leverage for patrols, for bargaining in maritime disputes, and for domestic audiences hungry for security competence. That's why political figures parade them. They're tangible symbols that a government is doing something. But symbols can outpace logistics. A flashy commissioning photo doesn't fix supply chain delays or procurement politics. And in the long game, maintenance, crew training, and integration matter as much as missiles. So, what have we got? A frigate that's modern, modular, and ambitious, but also a little hollow in places. A ship that mixes high-tech with budget gaps. Firepower with placeholders, pride with dependency. It's Indonesia's naval coming-of-age story, with all the awkward teenage flaws included. But here's the big question. Does it really matter if not every weapon is bolted in yet? Or is the very existence of these frigates enough to make rivals think twice? Because in war, half the battle is psychological, and the Marta Donata, flaws and all, sends a loud, clear message. Don't underestimate us. So, what do you think? Is the Marta Donata a real game changer or just an overpriced photo shoot for Jakarta's Navy? Drop your verdict in the comments. And don't be like Proboo Subianto, making big defense promises that sound tough but arrive half loaded. Smash that subscribe button, because unlike Proboo's procurement deals, this channel actually delivers.